Hey, what's up everybody? We're back and now we're going to be exploring the many-to-many -many relationship using Vux ORM. So just quickly running through what we went over in the last video, we're going to have a user and that user is going to have many roles. And in order to do that, the user is going to need a pivot table, which will be the user, oh, the role user table, and that's how it's going to find its roles. And because of that, the opposite is also going to be true. We're going to be able to say roles, look into the role user table and give us the user. So basically this little part in between here, once we've got it set up, once we've got that abstracted using Vux ORM, we don't even have to worry about it. After we've got that set up, we'll be able to just say, give me the user with their roles. Now that you know our goal in this video, let's do a little bit of cleanup to make this a little bit easier. Now. I'm going to get rid of all of this here. I'm not going to get rid of it, but I'm going to comment it out. And we're going to start using a new component in this video, just so we can go back to this later when we explore other relationships. But we want a new component that we can work with in, in this video. So we'll say many to many. I'm going to copy that, scroll down here, import that component. So we'll have to say dot slash components, many to many and then we'll whack it in there as well. And now we'll have to run yarn serve. And once that's up and running, oh, we're also gonna have to build the component. So many to many dot view. Now I have a snippet for my templates and you totally should as well. If not, I would take the time right now to create a snippet like this or whatever suits you because this is something that we do all the time in view. All right, anyway, now we want to spit out all of the users. So let's just say an unordered list. And then this is going to have a H1 in it. And in that H1 will be the user's name. Okay, so we're gonna to have to say V-4 user in users. We'll have to give that a key equal to, whoop, equal to the user's ID. And then we'll spit out the user's name here, user.name. Now if we go back to app.view, we can grab some of the code in here to get us up and running quickly. Yeah, here we go. Let's just grab this here. And then on mounted, so mounted, we're going to insert that user. So we're going to need the user imported up here as well. User, see, I usually have this namespace here, but uh, I haven't set that up in this app, this alias. So we'll just have to say dot slash for now, which is fine. Oh, dot dot slash. And then we'll say user.insert. And the data for that user is equal to what we just copied there. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. Now we need a computed property that's going to fetch this user. So let's scroll down, computed. And we're going to say users. Because later on, we're going to have more than one user. So we're, that's why it's the plural users. We'll return user.all. And I think that's everything we need for it all to work. So let's go into that. Yep, looks like it's working. Awesome. Now let's just try adding another user because we're going to need two users in this video. So let's grab all of that, Control X, turn that into an array, and then we'll copy that down and make another user. So copy that and come down here. Let's give them an ID of 22. We'll call them Aaron and he can be Aaron at example.com. Okay, so we're almost ready to get started. There we go, we got both of our users there. Now, a user is going to have many roles and a role will have many users. So it stands to reason that we're going to need a role class as well. So let's just maybe duplicate this item class here and we'll call it role.js. And we're not going to need list. We can change the word item to role. And inside the database, it'll be called roles. Uh, what else do we need? Let's give a role a role or maybe a title. So the title of this role will be this dot adder. And I like to just say relationships here. And that's where we're gonna put our relationships. All right, so that looks pretty good. And we'll also need that table we were talking about, which will connect the role to the user and the user to the role. So let's duplicate this and we'll call that role user. Now, before I create that, remember, 
that this needs to be in alphabetical order. Well, it doesn't have to be, but usually it's a convention where it will be in alphabetical order. So role comes before user in the alphabet. That's why it's role user instead of user role. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. We're going to duplicate this and create the role user table. All right, so we're going to call this role user, role user. And also notice that this isn't pluralized. That's how it's done in Laravel. So that's what I'm doing here. That's why I'm not saying role users. It's a Laravel convention and VUXORM is based on Laravel. So that just kind of made sense to me. So it looks like that's all set up. Now, the next thing we need is the user ID. And we also need the role ID. Okay, so if this has a user ID of one, and a role ID of two, then using this table, the role with an ID of two can find a user with an ID of one. And the user with an ID of one can find the role with an ID of two. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. We'll get rid of that. And now let's actually register these components. So we jump into the store here, copy this down twice, role there, role user there, copy this down twice, role and here will be role user save that refresh the page make sure everything's working and it is fantastic all right so i can get rid of relationships here because role user won't have any relationships itself and the last thing to do is actually define the relationship and this is how we do it when we want to grab the users okay so we're inside the role class right now when we want to grab the users we say this dot belongs to many. And what does it belong to many of? It belongs to many users. So let's just import that import dot slash user. And how is it going to find that user? This is where the role user table comes in. It's going to find that user using the role user table. And there we go. So we've imported that as well. Now next we want to say how do I find myself, right? So how does this role class find itself? It does that using the role ID. And then we wanna say, how do I find the user? And it does that using the user ID. Okay, so this here, role ID and user ID, these are sitting on the role user table. So by using this table, we can now connect the role to the user. Now we want to do the inverse of this relationship sitting on the user table and it's going to look the exact same. So let's just do it again. When we want to find the roles, we say this dot belongs to many. What does it belong to many of? Roles. How are we going to find those roles? Using the role user intermediate table or pivot table. How do I find myself? So how do I find the user on this table? Using the user ID field? And how do I find the role on this table using the role ID field? All right, and that's it. So that one's a little bit more complicated. Watch this video as many times as you need to to understand this part here um, and check out the documentation. And look, to be honest, I often don't even remember this stuff. So I'm constantly going back to the documentation to check you know, what order what goes in. So once you understand how it works, you can always just check the documentation, which is fantastic for Vuxx ORM. All right, let's test this out. We'll go to our many-to-many -many component and give this user a few roles. I'll give myself the admin role. So that'll have an ID of 43. And let's set the title to admin. And now we can just copy paste this down. And maybe I'm also going to give myself the designer role as well. So I'm an admin and I'm also a designer. Okay, so that's cool. Let's, let's just copy the designer one here and we'll give that to Aaron. So we've just brought Aaron on our team. He's a designer. And by the way, remember, this is going to be a request. So I want you to imagine that we've just received a request from the server and this is what it looks like. You wouldn't be just whacking this straight in. You would literally just say data and then put in, for example, request.data. Anyway, let's get back to it. So here we go, we've got Luke and he's got a role of admin and a role of designer. And then we've got Aaron 
and he has a role of designer. And by the way, something to note here, this isn't going to be inserted into the database twice. It will only be inserted into the database once. So notice that we've got it twice here. VOOX ORM will just put it into the database once so we haven't got redundant data, which is really cool. So let's save that. And now we'll come down here. We'll turn this into a query. And whenever we grab the user, with that user, we want to grab their roles as well. And then we'll say get to get that. Now let's scroll to the top, maybe just refresh the page now. Ah, oh, we got a problem here. In role.js, it looks like we haven't defined users. Let's go into role. Aha, uh -huh. I don't know how that ended up happening. <laughs> user from class, oh, dot slash user. Let's save that, see if that solved it. Awesome. So now we wanna spit out the roles that Aaron and Luke have. So let's get that going and see if it works. We'll create a list item there. Close it off here. And we'll say v-4 role in user dot roles. Okay, so we're already iterating over the users. Now we're going to grab the current user we're on, and then we're going to get all of the roles within that user. And then we'll say v-text is equal to role dot Role, oh, it wasn't role, we said role dot title. And then we'll say the key is equal to the role ID. Always need a key in there. Save that, refresh the page. Looks like I've done something wrong. Ah, uh, I know what I've done here. So this is something that I've actually forgotten several times before. So I'm kind of glad I ran into this problem. Now, if we go into the role user table, it actually needs to know about this user ID and role ID. And to do that, we say static primary key, and then we set that equal to an array. And the first thing in the array will be our role ID. So role ID, and then our user ID. And this lets VOOX ORM know about the IDs on this pivot table. So it lets us know, hey, this is one of the IDs, the role ID, and this is one of the IDs, the user ID. Okay, so it needs that extra bit of information. So let's save that. And there we go, everything is working now. How cool is that? So Aaron is a designer and Luke is also a designer and Luke is an admin. However, we're not done yet because the inverse of this is also true. I'll show you what I mean. So we could probably get rid of all of that. Let's get rid of all of this. And we'll come down here. All right, we can still insert everything the same. But down here, instead of fetching all of the users, let's fetch all of the roles. And we'll return here role. We'll do a query there. And we want the role with the users. So basically, we're doing the exact opposite now. Rather than getting all of the users' roles, we're getting all of the roles with their users. And we can do that because it's a many-to-many -many relationship. It works both ways. Now let's scroll to the top here, create an unordered list, and we're gonna spit out all of the roles. So we'll create a H1 there. And here we'll say V-4 equals role in roles. And there I'm going to say the roles title. So let's just see if that works to begin with. Oh, something I always forget, the key, role.id. There we go. So now we've got admin and designer. We're doing the exact opposite. This is so cool. And then we can say list items. And I'll say v dash whoop v dash four equals user in role dot users. I just think this is so awesome. The key will be equal to the user's ID, and the text will be equal to that user's name. And there we go. There's all the admins, and there's all of the designers. And just to kind of drive this home and show you how exciting this is. If we come down here and we create a button, just a dumb little example here, and we say, for example, change name. You don't have to follow along with me here. I'm just trying to demonstrate something. And at click, we'll just say change name, and I'm gonna change my name from Luke to something else. So let's go to the method section, change name. And then we're going to say user.update where the ID is equal to 28. Okay, so when you do where here, this is how you find 
what you want to update. You can actually pass through a function here as well, which is really cool. So you could say, for example, the current user, and then you could say if the users.name is equal to cool, I don't know, something like that, and get everybody whose name is equal to cool or, or John or whatever, which is really cool because it means that you can update a whole bunch of things at the same time. But anyway, I digress. We're just going to say where the ID is equal to 28. We're going to give it some new data and we're just going to change the name to Lucas. I used to hate being called that as a kid, but now we're going to do it. All right. So when I click on change name, notice that it changes in both of these areas and updates straight away. So this is the cool thing about doing it with Vuex, doing it with Vue. All of this functionality allows us this incredible flexibility and this incredible control over our data. And I promise you, when you've got larger projects and you're dealing with relationships that are all over the place and then updating this changes something over there and over there and over here, it's so awesome to have something like Vuex ORM, which just ties it all together so beautifully. And that's why I wanted to show you this example here. It's a small example, but you might have, for example, a whole bunch of stuff nested all the way down and then it ends up sort of grabbing the user and a component all the way off in the never-nevers, like on the right side of the page here. And by clicking change name, it will update it instantly using Vux ORM. And you don't have to worry about nested data. You don't have to worry about those reactivity problems. And I know I say that a lot, but it's so freaking exciting to finally be able to use Vue in this way, to finally be able to update data anywhere in my application and truly know that it's going to stay up to date. This is what gets me really excited about Vuex ORM, that kind of power and that kind of knowledge that knowing my whole application is truly in sync now. Now let's just do a super quick recap. We have the user model here and a user has many roles. And we define the relationship here by saying a user has many roles and it finds them through the role user table. So let's jump in there. And the user knows about its roles because of the user ID sitting right there. So it finds all of the roles that have this user ID and then it spits out all of the corresponding roles. And the opposite is true as well. So if we go into the role table, a role has many users. Okay, so this role belongs to many users. It finds them through the role user table. All right, so we jump in here, finds that role, and then using these tables, it can grab all of its associated users. I hope that makes sense. If you can wrap your head around this relationship, it doesn't actually get much harder than this. Even when we go into polymorphic relationships, it's pretty much the same idea with just an extra layer of complexity on top of it. So if you need to watch this video again, that's the many-to-many -many relationship. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you, and I'll see you in the next one.